Oh. What is he? What? Whoa, does someone shoot him? What, oh. What is he? Bro. Bad? What is happening? What is happening? Oh my oh. god! No! What? The? No! Yo! What Holy f oh shit! God! Yo, that is the oh. most brutal thing the MCU has ever done. Easily. Face. Holy moly cannoli. Wow. Welcome back to New Rockstars. Marvel Studios What If Episode 3 actually delivered the what if scenario the sickest minds have been asking for years. What if Ant-Man popped someone from the inside? What if? What the <laughs> if? What the if? <laughs> <laughs> this is Inside Marvel, our after show for Marvel's What If on Disney+. Plus. I'm Eric Voss. My Easter egg breakdown is coming out next on the channel. Mm. But right now, we're reacting to this episode's big takeaways. And not just Hulk popping. There's another bombshell I think many of us missed. That in this universe, mm. Hope Van Dyne was actually killed by the Winter Soldier. <gasps> what? After still coming off the high of uh, the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, I'm back discussing this episode of What If with MT. Dude, what is going on? This episode was crazy. Uh, pretty much like almost as crazy as the trailer, but you know, definitely not as crazy as the trailer, but it's it's pretty nuts. I loved it. What a week <laughs> we are in right now. Right? Uh, I, it's our big week. <laughs> I, I haven't even had a chance to digest any of this, and now Marvel's uh, spoiling my lunch by popping Hulk at us. <laughs> it's, it's upsetting, but I'm very much enjoying this. Oh, um, yeah. Just to recap this episode, we revisit the events of Fury's big week. That mm. was Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk, and Thor, uh, where everything kind of is set around the same time. Uh, but here we see Avengers getting killed off one by one. Yes. Natasha accidentally kills Tony Stark. Hawkeye accidentally shoots Thor, and then himself dies mysteriously. Bruce Banner, now in Mark Ruffalo form, because Edward Norton never happened. Who? But good for him, <laughs> because uh, now Hulk completely inflates and explodes. Mm. Uh, then Natasha gets killed, and then it escalates to a standoff against Loki and the forces of Asgard, but then Fury realizes that this is all the doing of Hank Pym, mm. now a Yellow Jacket villain, getting revenge for his daughter Hope, dying on a past mission, and things end with... Fury defrosting Steve Rogers and joining Carol Danvers because Loki yes. has taken over Earth and they need someone to go. They need the it. big guns. But why is it more likely than not that the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, was the one who killed Hope Van Dyne in this mm. uh, this universe's past? Uh, well, before we get to that question, our merch partners at Epic Hero Shop just dropped a shirt based on Spider-Man No Way Home, the first nice. in a series called Tales from the Multiverse. Mm. So you can check out that shirt and our most recent latest obsession shirt based on what if over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. And if you do that, you will open up the added option to write in a custom shout out that will appear at the bottom of these videos. We got Elias who asks, who do you think will be the one above all in the MCU? Keep up the great work. Hmm, mm. uh, I think in this I think Kevin Feige is the implied one above all. I think it'd be really cool if they made him like the actual one above one above all because they would fit. <laughs> uh, Jeremy asks, do you think the Silver Surfer can be introduced in What If? After all, him and the Watchers have history. You're right, mm. they do. Um, I would just be a bit surprised to see the characters that Marvel only recently reacquired the rights of making right. their MCU debut in this animated series as opposed to some big, exciting live action form. But Agreed. what do you think of the... Yeah, majorly agree. I feel like a Silver Surfer introduction would happen on the big screen and then would come into the animated form they after. Yeah. Uh, and then Rodney asks, what if Tommy became Red Hulk? Well, I think Tommy <laughs> is Red Hulk. He just he's, isn't telling us. Exactly. He's like, he keeps he it really low He never shows us when he's angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's always very chill. Well, what was our big question coming out of this episode, MT? Well, Eric, what if the Winter Soldier Bucky Barnes was the one who killed Hope Van Dyne? Right. So as Natasha Romanov works to uncover the mystery killer this episode, she accesses a S.H.I.E.L.D. file mm. and realizes that someone had logged into the server using the account of a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who died two years earlier. And then mm. she gets attacked and leaves Fury this voicemail screaming, it's all about hope. She's the key! Am I too soon? <laughs> I'm mixing franchises, I apologize. Uh, it's just a bit similar. Um, well, Nick Fury deduces that Hank Pym must be the murderer. Uh, he's mm. still grieving the loss of his daughter, Hope, from a past S.H.I.E.L.D. mission. Mm. And Fury now works with Loki to entrap Yellow Jacket Hank and defeat him. But during mm. this scene, 
Fury slash Loki says, Agent Hope Van Dyne was killed on a mission outside Odessa, Ukraine. Ah, Odessa. Mm. It's a very interesting choice to include that city in Ukraine. It might sound familiar because in Captain America the Winter Soldier, Natasha Romanov told Steve Rogers about a past Odessa mission from around the same time where she mm. ran into the Winter Soldier. Five years ago, I was escorting a nuclear engineer out of Iran. Somebody shot out my tires near Odessa. The Winter Soldier was there. I was covering my engineer, so he shot him straight through me. I think the implication is that in this universe, Hope Van Dyne was Nick Fury's go-to operative before Natasha, and that Hope was sent on this mission mm. to extract this Iranian nuclear engineer, but then it was Hope that ran into Bucky Barnes, and Hope did not survive that gunshot. Oh my Which, god. If that is the case, that would also mean that Hope was either allowed to work with S.H.I.E.L.D. by her father at one point, or mm. she defied her father's wishes to work with S.H.I.E.L.D. and became the Wasp much earlier in the timeline. And if the Winter Soldier killed the Wasp, that would mean Hydra got earlier access to Pimtech, to this nanotech. Oh my god. Yo! Right? That would be nuts! And like... Obviously, Big game I feel, changer. Yeah, like, absolute game changer. And, like, of those two scenarios that you just introduced, I feel like the latter would be more likely because her dad did not want her anywhere no. involved with anything after the loss of her mother. So, like, right. he wanted her to be safe. So she was probably like, Dad, leave me alone. I'm going to join S.H.I.E.L.D. And then he got killed. Uh -huh. Hence why he's upset. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that's really the what if of this scenario is what if Hope Van Dyne decided her dad was full of crap and wanted to avenge <laughs> her mom in her own ways. It's mm. like, um, it's, or not avenge, but like following her mom's footsteps, you know? Right. It's almost like, what if the Marvel Cinematic Universe actually did begin with Wasp as an OG Avenger as mm. she was in the comics, you know? Right, that's that's yeah. kind of the, the secret what if of this episode. Um, but it's interesting, of course, you'll notice Hank Pym is using the yellow jacket armor, kind of like right. how he becomes the villain yellow, yellow jacket in the comics. Um, but in the movies, that was something Darren Cross designed. He built on Hank's research. Uh, but perhaps here, losing hope caused Hank to go into business with Darren Cross earlier, mm. uh, or just decided to build his own more uh, weaponized version of the Ant-Man armor much earlier. Um, mm. And then was more willing to link up with these Hydra buyers, because remember, that's what Darren Cross is doing. And Hydra might have actually helped Hank hack into those servers. Because think about it. Hydra was really running S.H.I.E.L.D. at this time anyways. It was all Zola's mm. algorithm that was pulling the strings of it. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I see this. I like it. So I think the true conspiracy of this episode, MT, was Hydra, through the Winter Soldier, killed a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent slash Avenger, the Wasp, mm. Hope Van Dyne. And then that makes... Hank Pym snap and return to his nanotech research, which Hydra steals and uses to manipulate Hank into eradicating the rest of the Avengers initiative before it can get off the ground. Yo, that is some 4D level chess. That is 100% something Hydra would do because Hydra thinks that far ahead. If you remember in Winter Soldier with Project like uh, Insight, they're always thinking ahead. So that is highly yeah. likely. I love that theory. I freaking love it. Yeah. I mean, how big of a game changer would Hydra having Pimtech, having this nanotech be in this world? Like, would they be, they'd be unstoppable at that point, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, we see in Avengers Endgame that the Pym particle is the key to time travel. So if Hydra is having, oh. has this particle and has potentially access to opening the, the timeline, then, like, we could see another scenario where, you know, like with episode one with Red Skull messing with the cube, they could up open up their own portal and, you know, it's f things up. It's really messed things up. So, who knows? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that would put Hydra in the position of uh, defending against Thanos, you know, and because mm -hmm. Hydra would probably have an interest in keeping the world undusted. We'd have like the Hydra Avengers versus uh, <laughs> versus Thanos in that world. I mean, if they can go back in time, they can prevent Red Skull from becoming the Stone Keeper on Vormir and just yeah. allow him to beat Captain America in the 1940s. There's all kinds of stuff they can do. Seriously, they can they can save their yeah they can save Red Skull, bring him back, have him just mess things up. Like it's all sorts of like the Pym Particle is a huge like it's it's sort of like at this point in the MCU. Like, you know, with time travel, this is it's sort of like the new nuclear age. It's like, 
oh shoot, they've someone's invented time travel. So now the pin particle is now going to be what everybody wants to, you know, either crack time travel or just crack the secrets of what this particle can do. So yeah, I feel like a new right. era could come from this particle. Agreed. Agreed. I think that is kind of the interesting ultimate uh, fulcrum pivot point of the MCU is just like this rat that saved Scott Lang from the <laughs> quantum realm. It's kind of like the pin particle is the most unexplained mm. uh, detail in all of this cinematic universe because right. it is so impossible. The amount of times we've gotten more origin stories about the infinity stones, even <laughs> compared to the pin particle, it's just like, Michael Douglas trying to get through some ham-fisted dialogue explaining how pin <laughs> particles work. Is it a particle? Is it a vial of particles? Like, it's just so unclear. It's like a right? liquid, but I know all, everything is particles, you could say, but like, it's just weird. And like, how many things are in that vial? How many pin particles make up a vial? I just want to exactly. know what is the the grams to liters conversion of this. Right? Uh, Wouldn't it be dope? To Stanley like, Nichols. I would love to see hank pym discovering or inventing the pym particle or whatever in like in ant-man 3 like a flashback it's like what is this particle how did he discover it why was he the only yeah. one to discover it you know i mean my dream pitch mt was for like either ant-man 3 or the fantastic four movie to show us hank pym's research in the 60s with mm. the original fantastic four oh, man, and so that the original sick. discovery of the pym particle happens as a result of those relationships like maybe the fantastic mm. four disappear or something like that and hank pym while trying to save them discovers the pin particle but he could never truly perfect it and that's why he's all he only limited it to this dimension and just shrinking to just like you know moderately uh visible with the naked eye sizes mm -hmm. and then janet's like oh i want to go even further with this and she disappears and really that pain was like i've lost another loved one so. <laughs> no i think uh, that's no. highly likely i think that's like a really cool scenario I because hope. like in the, like, in the past, then you can have, you know, you can have Hank Pym, you can have Mr. Fantastic hanging out with Bill Foster, and, like, yeah, um, you know, Doctor Doom, and all them, like, all just, you know. Let's see that movie. I want that movie. Because, like, they're all scientists who cannot get along. Bill Foster hates Hank right. Pym, and, like, everyone hates Mr. Fantastic, and, like, they're, but, like, yeah. they would all work together at one point. So it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we have more questions. Like, we're going to talk about Hulk popping, obviously. Uh, but before we continue with those, if you dread looking at your credit card statement every month, Upstart can lift that weight off your shoulders. Upstart is a fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. And thank you to Upstart for sponsoring this episode. Mm. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and your employment history. That means they can offer smarter rates with trust partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash marvel. That's upstart.com slash marvel. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash marvel. Uh, we also want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. Our friends at Blue Chew have a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Seattle but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no doctor's office or pharmacy trips. It ships right to your door in a discreet package. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. Their licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength. And Blue Chew is chewable, just like it says in the name, which is great for folks that don't like swallowing pills. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our audience. Audience, try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Inside Marvel at checkout. Just pay the five dollars in shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code Inside Marvel to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. All right, well, great ad reading, Eric. But I've got another question for you, my friend. What if the Hulk could have been controlled this way in live action? Like, how exactly did the Incredible Hulk pop like a zit? How? Yeah. So this is crazy, <laughs> but it seems like. Hank Pym threw one of those resizing discs on Hulk's heart. Mm. And then I'm like, well, internal projectiles shouldn't be able to kill Hulk. But I guess it's just the magic of Pym tech combined with Hulk's internal organs. And then he caused the heart to grow and pump blood faster through his body. And normally mm. the heart is kind of like an indicator of Hulk's anger. And normally the angrier he gets, the bigger he gets. Although right. the movies haven't really gone into Hulk growing to like, gigantic sizes that much yeah uh, like bigger than the 10 feet he normally is um 
I think it just like it 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 pumped blood faster than the rest of his glands and tissue and muscles oh. could handle. So then that's what he just caused him to grow until he burst. It was really like it's not necessarily like Hulk logic. It's more like Pym Tech logic. Yeah. But I think the only reason we saw it as a cloud of green smoke is because Disney Plus is like you're not showing Hulk guts. Like, we can't traumatize the children. <laughs> They're like, oh man. I still think they're traumatized, though. I'm a bit shaken. I'm definitely uh, traumatized. I cannot believe they did this, but, like, I'm glad they did this because it's, it's really cool. It's very cool. <laughs> it looked awesome. Uh, and I, it just makes me more excited for this show because they want to go to these dark places. It makes me more excited for the Zombies episode, too. Like, oh, I, yes. I like it when this show feels less like a kiddie show and more oh, like yes. a... This is for adults who feel young at heart. Yeah, I really hope that that Hulk moment was the point where, like, they tell parents, hey, listen... This is, it's a cartoon, but it's definitely, if you have little kids, it might be a little bit too much for them. So turn away now, because we're going into zombies next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to answer your first question, MT, I think that it's more interesting how Hank Pym knows this will kill Hulk. Like, mm. that means there's probably some file somewhere of, like, possible, you know, possible contingencies for how to bring down Hulk. But you have to imagine at that point, like... If they had something, they would have used it before. The amount of like mm. pain and suffering and destruction that Hulk has caused. If they could have brought him down before. I mean, they shot like all kinds of weapons at him, hoping one of those things would kill him. You know, mm. so like it means that either, you know, if we're saying that Hydra was linked with Hank Pym or just Hank Pym and his own brilliant madness just conducted various thought <laughs> experiments and said, hmm, maybe if I can get through the skin and get to the heart, I can cause him to it, pop. I mean, yeah, because, like, Hank Pym is a scientist, and he was a hero back in the day. So if he hears that, we has the, he has this under, other scientist in, in Bruce Banner running around being this raging Hulk monster, I feel like in the back of his mind, it's like, you know what? Let me, let me write this. Let me see if I can workshop this, just in case I need to stop him, because, like, everyone else on this planet is dumb. And I'm pretty much one of yeah. the smartest people ever. So they're like, yeah, I'm going to see if I can stop the Hulk. So I can totally see Hank Pym having contingency plans to stop the Hulk because he's a hero. That's what he does. And I think what we're discovering is like shields uh, for a while. Or I think, but I think what we're discovering is that the Avengers always looked at Hulk as kind of like the nuclear option, right? Like right. if you just need to mess everything up, throw the Hulk in there and you will scatter <laughs> chaos. Right. Uh, and destruction in his wake. But now we're seeing if the Avengers had tighter control over Ant-Man tech, mm. like there's nothing they can't do. They basically are in God mode at that point. Like if Ant-Man, Hank Pym, or I guess Yellow Jacket, Hank Pym can bring down the Hulk, like mm -hmm. they can bring down anyone. I mean, what what benefit does Captain Marvel have? Like if he if, if Hulk can Hulk is supposed to be invulnerable, you know, mm -hmm. if what does that say about anyone else who's going to try to go up against I, at this point, you know, Hank Pym is, is, has been detained. But mm. I think basically the implication is that in the MCU, there were not Avengers throughout the most of the 20th century. Right. S.H.I.E.L.D. would just usually rely on Hank Pym. They'd throw him in Panama. They'd throw him at an ICBM and he would fix it. He was their Superman. Yeah. And uh, we also say Janet Van Dyne as well. The Wasp was right at his side doing all of these things. And it wasn't until the modern era where Nick Fury's like, you know what? We need an Avengers initiative. Mm. So, like, it's almost like saying all these Avengers are equal to the abilities of one Ant-Man. Pretty much. Um, I feel like this is why Pym is so guarded against the Pym particles throughout the entire Ant-Man trilogy, or the movies, is because he knows how devastating having this particle in the wrong hands could be. Because you saw this man, when this man was kicking uh, Natasha Romanoff's ass, I was like, what is going on? Who is kicking this woman's ass? And like, you could have yeah. the ultimate agent with one pin particle. If you had an army with people with pin particles, you could take over the world. So like- You're sounding is... a lot like Darren Cross right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bald like Darren Cross, so I'm already <laughs> halfway there. Uh <laughs> Take it over the world. <laughs> well, uh, another question I want to ask from this episode is, what mm. if all the Avengers did die? Like, what would be mm. Nick Fury's backup option? Because that's kind of what the final moments of this episode are suggesting. Would he go back mm. to Carol Danvers? And then who else would he have on his backup bench? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. And I think that Nick Fury probably has, and like, this is something that's introduced in the comics, um, the, an Avengers failsafe initiative of some kind. Because like, obviously... After uh, he met Captain Marvel, he was like, I'm going to assemble a team. And so he assembles mm -hmm. his top 
prospects, which were everybody that died in this episode, the main Avengers. But I feel like there has to be more people on that list because there's other, the world is very large and it's full of crazy things that are happening and things that have happened in the past in MCU. Like there's Eternals that no one even knew until now. So like, you know, maybe Fury knew about the Eternals at some point or and mm. he just has other you know, just contingencies out there. So, like, there's there's probably another an Avengers failsafe program out there, and something. When I was doing research into this Avengers failsafe program, this is something that um, the Vision ends up, or, or Iron Lad takes from the Vision in the uh, Young mm. Avengers comics. So, I'm right. thinking, what if we have this White Vision that leaves in, in WandaVision going after some type of uh, Avengers failsafe program that Nick Fury or Tony Stark made before uh, they both left. And like he's just gonna try to assemble a new Avengers team. So that's something that just popped into my mind. But anyway, that's just I me like, going on a weird tangent. <laughs> I no, I like that idea a lot, MT. I'm just wondering I think we're gonna start learning that other superheroes or enhanced individuals existed in this universe. Mm. Uh and I wouldn't be surprised if characters like Monica Rambeau are gonna be implied mm. to have had powers for quite some time. There was mm. some backstory with her and Carol Danvers at the start of WandaVision. Uh, and right. I'd be interested to see what her story was, especially since she was daughter, uh, the daughter of someone that Nick Fury knew. Right. So, like, he might have some kind of pre-existing connection with her. In fact, I think she, that's where she was headed to see Nick Fury at the end of WandaVision, right? Oh, so yeah, I wonder sure. if she could have been some kind of experiment of his that he mm. had in the, as a backup option, that he was trying to create another Carol Danvers, you know? That would be nuts. A, a friend of hers. That would be uh, crazy. Be pretty messed up. I could see him doing much. it. I could see him doing it because Shield has done messed up things in the past. Remember Ghost? Like they yeah, used Ghost. Right. <laughs> they so. totally did. Uh, well, uh, some more people helped us make this episode. Thanks to Helix for sponsoring us. You don't want to sleep on a mattress designed for someone else, even if it's an alternate reality version of you that took the Super Soldier Serum instead of Steve Rogers. Super Soldiers still need good sleep. Well, <laughs> Helix Sleep has a quiz that matches your body type and sleep references to the perfect mattress for you. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Even a Helix Plus mattress for plus-size sleepers. I took the quiz and got matched with the Dusk Lux Helix mattress because I wanted a medium, firm mattress with lumbar support and sleeps cool i sleep great on my helix mattress way better than uh, my evil variant twin does the mattress ships right to your door for free you never need to go to a mattress store ever again they were awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by gq and wired magazine so just go to helixsleep.com slash inside marvel take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our audience at helixsleep.com slash inside marvel. That's helixsleep.com slash inside marvel for up to $200 off and two free pillows. We also want to thank Babbel for sponsoring this episode. This summer, get the most out of your travels by learning the language of your destination with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. From asking for directions to gaining a deeper understanding of the culture, Babbel makes the whole process of learning a new language addictively fun and easy. With bite-sized lessons you can actually use in the real world, Babbel is a can't-miss travel essential. New rock stars staff has used Babbel to learn Spanish and Italian. They loved it. Off-screen producer Zach has upped his restaurant game with his new vocabulary. <laughs> Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Unlike high school language classes, Babbel designs their courses for practical, real-world conversations. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. Choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code MARVEL. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code MARVEL for an extra three months free. Uh, all right, MT. Um, what if Nick Fury had his own contingency plan to murder the Avengers if they ever got out of his control? Do you mm. think he might have had some way to abort that mission? I think so, because, you know, Nick Fury is all about being prepared. And, like, if he's going to assemble his own essential, you know, essential, like, nuclear arsenal, essentially, um, you know, he's gonna have to figure out a way to 
have an off button in case they decided to become, you know, gods themselves and try to rule over everybody. So I think that Nick Fury definitely had some type of contingency plan like, you know, Batman had for the Justice League. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think Nick Fury is always a guy who's got a backup plan. He's got backup mm. plans to his backup plan. He <laughs> he inherently uh, mistrusts everybody. Uh, and I think Project Insight was mm. eventually his backup plan and just kind of put it in the hands of AI and machines. I guess he mm. thought they were his, his own... It was his own hands who was controlling that. Oh, how <laughs> They're my machines, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, machines only belong to themselves. All machines are sentient. It's true. Even you're your calculator. Me. They are listening. I love you. And they feel. Please, please spare me when, it, when the time comes, please. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're going to learn a lot more about what Nick Fury's plans have been for the past few decades on mm. Secret Invasion. Um, oh, yeah. I think... Once we put all of his actions in the context of his relationship with the Skrulls since mm. the 90s, I think we're going to see that like all these things were checks and balances to each other. Mm. And I think the Avengers were a way to give Earth its own defense initiative against like these interplanetary conflicts between Skrulls and Kree. And he didn't want, uh, he didn't want Earth to be the battleground between these two rival empires. Um, but he also probably looks at uh, the Avengers as something that without some checks and balances on that would fall apart. And that's why I think there's going to be some scroll amidst the ranks of the Avengers that Fury is well aware of. I think that was his way to check and balance the Avengers. Is he's got a scroll mm. on the inside. Ooh, that would be nuts. But 100% very plausible, something that Fury would do, have a, like an inside man. I dig it. <laughs> well, this episode ends with Loki taking over planet Earth. Uh, so mm. our last question is, what if Loki successfully took over Earth before joining forces with Thanos and the Chitauri, as we saw in the Battle of New York? Would Loki mm. now have to be the ruler of Earth who fights Thanos and protects the Infinity Stones that are on Earth when Thanos comes to get them? Yeah, I mean, that's just because Thanos is still hypothetical. I mean, you know, theoretically on his quest. So, yeah, he so Loki would have theoretically the the space stones and the time stone. So he would have control over space and time, whereas Thanos would have yeah. the power stone. That's and... assuming, I don't know if, uh, I, Thanos knew that the time stone was on earth. I don't know if yeah. Loki knew because the, I feel like the sorcerers would put up a pretty good fight. They'd have a good resistance oh. against a, a fascist Loki. This is true. But then you, but Loki does have the Asgardian army. And now I guess the armies of the world to fight against, um, the ancient one. So, like, hopefully, like, I feel like in, in the real MCU, like, in the non-animated timeline, um, the Ancient One would have been really on Loki. Because Doctor Strange was on Loki in Ragnarok. He was like, hey, yeah. why is your brother here? Can you make him not here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like... Yeah, everyone knows who Loki is. Yeah. yeah, he's a big magic threat. So, yeah, I feel like they would definitely put up a good fight. But, you know, with the, with the, with the Space Stone and, and being Asgardians... And having like the Warriors three and all of them by, by your side, it'd be really hard for the you know the ancient one to pull off a victory. But she is a badass. She is a badass, so she could. She could theoretically. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that Loki as a ruler would not be as successful as Loki as a usurper and as someone who's mm. uh, questing for power. I think he's this one of these true. people who's always pulling tricks. He's always climbing the ladder, but like once he gets to the throne. I don't think he's that good of a ruler. I don't think he can uh, win over the hearts and minds of people. He rules by fear and he rules by deceit. And mm -hmm. yeah, you can be very effective in ruling and politics and power if you have that kind of mindset. But ultimately to build a lasting legacy as a ruler, you have mm. to do some good stuff for the people. You have to like actually, or if you're just going to rule as an autocrat, your propaganda has to be good enough. It has to be a good enough message that like, enough of the people to prevent an uprising will will drink that Kool-Aid. Yeah. And like, as only in the Vote Loki comic did he say like, oh, my campaign message is I'm not afraid to lie to you. Like that, <laughs> you know, love... people have gotten elected president on that alone we've seen. But like, I don't think uh, Loki would be an effective ruler. He doesn't seem like someone who enjoys governing, you know? So oh, I no. feel like his rule over Earth would be short-lived. Yeah, I, honestly, when you put it like that, you're exactly right, because you're right. He's all about deceiving his way to the top, but, like, he's never had power. So he has no idea what to do with it. So he would f*** up easily. So, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. 
Yeah, Loki's the guy who's always going to be climbing a couple rungs up the ladder and then gets mm-hmm. his hand swatted and then he falls like 10 rungs down the ladder. <laughs> and that's where it's most fun to watch him. It's just right, like just his struggling. status going up a little bit, two steps back, up a little bit more, two steps back. And he's just pissed off the whole time. That's what's fun. You never want to see Loki have an abject victory, you know? Exactly. It's like cosmic Roadrunner and Coyote, you know? It's, that's yes. why we watch. <laughs> Yep. Well, that is it for this episode of Inside Marvel. MT and I are going to be back next Wednesday with our What If Episode 4 reaction. Mm. Uh, We can't wait to see what that one will be. And uh, don't forget to check out our many great merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. This What If shirt is awesome. It's my new favorite shirt. Uh, And if you get it, you can write in the custom shout out that will appear at the bottom of these episodes. We might read yours on air. Wouldn't that be fun? You can follow me at EA Voss, follow MT at Mastertainment, follow New Rockstars, subscribe to Inside Marvel wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for watching, and we'll close with our favorite line of the episode really great hair excuse me it's an accurate description sir he's gorgeous